Good evening. It's 6 o'clock p.m. We will start this meeting. Um, call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Present. Yes. Thank you. Need a motion to approve tonight's meeting agenda. <laughs> Any discussion on the agenda before we approve it? If not, call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Thank you. Moving on to the consent agenda. Tonight we have for the consent agenda minutes of the March 6, 2023 regular city council meeting. Payments for contract services, and these are all for Moulton and Mink. Um, general Municipal Engineering, $4,705.50. Violet Hill Cemetery Expansion, $3,507. Iowa Street uh, Stormwater Wetland, in the amount of $3,802.50. 2020 Downtown Improvements, $3,815.50. 2019 Sanitary Sewer SIP Lining, $9,187. General Airport Engineering, $320. Runway 14, 30 seconds relocation, uh, phase one, $2,338. Runway 14, 30 seconds relocation, phase two, $1,850. Wastewater design, $17,563.50. And those should total up to $27,089.50. For claims, registers, and financials, we have $807,775.31. License and permits, we have none tonight. We're already up to um, city minister report, but first we need to approve these. We need a motion to approve the consent agenda items. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. And I'll second. Any discussion on those consent agenda items? I have a curiosity question. What was what was done at Violet Hill Cemetery? What's that expansion? They're doing some planning and design. We own what is it like 20 acres around the cemetery. So they're doing planning and design for the layout of the future cemetery expansion. Uh, as we are getting to a point where we need to be thinking about that future with the number of lots we have remaining in the current cemetery. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any, any other questions? If not, call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Okay, city administrator's report. All right. Five minutes, I'm fine by this. Um, <laughs> you don't have to go to the microphone. Do we want the good news or the bad news first? All of it. All of it? <laughs> so I'll start with the short one. The good news, um, if you remember last spring, about a year ago, I think, we applied through uh, former representative Cindy Axney's office for community project funding for an additional phase of our downtown project. And we were finally notified that we were awarded $1.9 million for that project. So Yay. that will buy us a whole extra block um, going from Warford on 2nd and doing 2nd Street up, including this intersection right here at 2nd Willis. So that's kind of our exciting, fun news. Um, so huge thank you to uh, former Congresswoman Cindy Axney and looking forward to uh, working with Congressman Zach Young. Um, none, Zach, none. Um, so we'll be putting together a press release and some uh, communications for the community. And then we will be working very closely with downtown property owners as that project moves through the downtown. So, so that's the exciting news. I did a handout today in front of everybody. So this is kind of a uh, rough final draft. I want to kind of put an introduction to this and just double check some of the numbers, but kind of our analysis uh, between Susie and I of um, mostly the two bills that we're looking at um, with the Senate file 550, um, which 
could affect local option sales tax, some property tax exemptions. Um, probably, you know, not that local option isn't something to sneeze at, but you'll notice Division 10 um, would eliminate all tax abatement programs within the state. Um, so that's a large issue for us um, in my narrative there. So in each of these sections, the bold italicized underlined portion is the effect uh, that this would have on Perry. Um, so with uh, Daniel's help, we put together from 17, 2017 to 2022, 65 new dwelling building permits were issued, including um, Perry Wood Apartments, which is 60 units in itself. So well over, uh, you know, like 125 plus units, um, including some units downtown and things like that, all really spurred because of our tax abatement program, our ability to push that. Also 51 improvements to properties throughout town um, that have taken advantage of that tax abatement program for making improvements to existing homes, which has definitely helped uh, our efforts in sprucing up the community. Um, Senate file 356, um, this was formerly SSB 1124. This is the property tax reform. Um, in its transition from the Senate study bill to Senate file, um, they did make a little bit of changes, but um, the Iowa League of Cities, if you go to this page, um, put together a formula for every community of if this legislation was put into place in 2017, uh, what effect it would have on each fiscal year for us. So you can see there um, for year 2023, we would have lost out on $169,000. So all of that, the back page is kind of a summary sheet. Um, and this is where we do, again, some double checking and things, but um, just in the general fund, if um, each of different parts of those go through, we could be looking at about a $250,000 uh, less in general fund revenue than what we have today. Um, and in total, we could be looking at uh, close to $350,000 in all of our funds. So uh, again, kind of rough draft, rough numbers. Um, and underneath that, just kind of our departments putting out uh, just some brainstorm of, you know, do we increase revenues to make up for the general fund revenues from our uh, taxes or do we reduce services to the level of our general fund revenue? So um, kind of some, some ideas on both sides of that coin underneath there. Again, I'll be continuing to work on this, fine tune it, uh, and then I'll be sending it out uh, in a final form uh, so that the community can really get a hold of it and understand it. And then uh, most importantly, there will be a contact sheet for some of our local representatives and senators. Senators. Sorry, Liz. <laughs> I want to keep track. Okay. So it doesn't seem that our legislators are very responsive to the needs of smaller rural communities at all. I have also noticed that. Most of them don't really know how city budgets work. They really they don't, don't have they a don't. clue. They would contact them, and they were just like, well, I didn't think it was going to have that big an impact. Yeah, they, they really don't know. They have no clue. So they don't know. These don't will know. be, uh, once this is in final form, I will be sending it out um, to our legislators. Um, last weekend, I went down to Waukee, got it with my president of the Greater Dallas County Development Alliance hat on. Um, and listen to the legislators down there. They were much more open to conversation uh, and much more responsive in having conversations around what these bills have for an impact to our community. So 
Um, the League of Cities has a really great tool. You can actually go on, select the city, and you go on. I know Daniel went on and looked at some of the towns around uh, North Central Iowa where his family lives. And it's a town of like 500 people looking at a $30,000 shortfall and $30,000 or less in a town of 500 people. So, you know, that's a Dawson, that's a Bowen, that's a Minburn. That it's really going to have a negative impact on the local communities. So, and what's the upside of all this legislation? Uh, Wealthy people get wealthier. Lowering property taxes is the objective. wealthy people get wealthy. So, it seems like a one-size all. Yeah, and that's that's really kind of the conversation that we're trying to have. And is it you know, just because it's easier to get it passed and become a more one business, it's going to. I think it's kind of a, a quick fix. One of the issues is that, um, so the uh, 356 is all based on the growth rate of our taxable valuation. So say we would attract a huge uh, facility that employs 200 people and has a hundred million dollar taxable value. Well, they would calculate that and only let us capture like two and a half percent of that value to increase. So really there is no incentive and really there's a disincentive for communities to uh, allow development within their communities because we can only grow our services at two and a half percent. So if we have to grow by 200 people, we won't be able to keep up with providing the level of services. So level of services will suffer in these high growth communities. I mean, think of a Grimes, a Waukee, West Des Moines, like they are really at a loss too because they have such expansive growth that they're supposed to be hiring 10 cops a year or adding 10 cops over the next five years, whatever that is, just to keep up with baselines of, you know, uh, officer to population ratios. They just, you know, they won't be able to. So, and then with us uh, across the board, just trying to keep up with um, inflation of the things that we're buying. They talk about, well, inflation is, you know, whatever percent. Well, that's for milk and eggs. Yeah. That's not concrete, steel, tires, you know, things that we're buying every day as the municipality to operate. Uh, I mean, the wastewater treatment plant is a great example. 30% over what it was supposed to cost. Yeah. So um, it's stories like that that we're also going to put together. Um, in some conversations, I've heard a lot of, well, you know, property tax collection statewide have doubled in the last 18 years. Well, a lot of costs have doubled in the last 18 years. That's 2005. Look at the cost of a home. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that's completely different. Yeah. Um, right, so the F two fifties that we were buying for the street department in 2005 were probably twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> Fully equipped, probably twenty thousand dollars. This year, now we're going to have to budget sixty five thousand dollars per per. Oh my! Oh yeah. So, talk about those increases and those differences. Uh, you know. The messages are not getting put out correctly. So well, the legislators want to just want a bunch of to believe the cities are overspending. Yeah. Some of them I believe have said that. So. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting trash once a week. We should have it only once a month. <laughs> and that I mean that could be a thing. Some places do trash pickup every other week. Maybe that's I mean that's a legitimate thing that we'll have to consider at some point if some of this stuff goes through or increase uh, garbage costs, whatever. So.
it's all kind of on the table. Lots of talking to be done. Can we go back to the good news? Good news is that <laughs> the feds gave us $1.9 million. Okay. Yeah. Hey, yay. Well, well, in your hey, report on, on that, unless somebody else has something for Sven, any questions? Further questions for Sven? Well, thanks for putting this together and thanks for your hard work. Yep. And I'll get the final draft, final version out hopefully tomorrow or Wednesday. Okay. So. Oh, let's get it to our legislators because they are not hearing us. Yeah, they are not hearing us at all. No. All right, thank you. Moving on to mayor council comments. It's spring and it's afternoon. It actually feels like spring. Hopefully, yes. I can put my snow shovel away, but I haven't yet. <laughs> um, just to, my like I usually get this every spring. You know, we're already, I'm sure we're already all of us seeing more people out walking, jogging, kids out playing and, and having more riding bicycles and all that fun stuff. So just a mindful reminder that uh, we we be all be careful and watch for people jogging, um, walking their dog and every, everything we like to do in the spring and summer. We don't want to have any, any more tragedies. So. Uh, I think that's all I have. Mayor, our council comments. Go for Sam up and some day that we'll have our car show here in the We'll go for another year. <laughs> that work out good for you. What's that? Oh, yeah. That's great. Only thing I want to be, I just like to be able to pick one of my cars. <laughs> Not be in a shop. <laughs> you got plenty of time to get them all fixed up. Any other council comments? If not, we'll move on to open forum. As usual, speakers will be asked to step up to the microphone and state their name and address for the record. Individuals speaking will be giving, given rather up to three minutes um, to address council. And uh, again, as per usual, you can address any item on the agenda or any other item you want to bring up to council. Do we have anybody for open forum tonight, either present or on Zoom? Nobody? If not, we'll, we'll move on to our public hearing. Tonight, we have a public hearing on City of Perry's um, received multi-residential development proposals. The purpose of this public hearing will be to review and receive recommendations on the received proposals for the redevelopment of Blue Jay Edition Lot 8, Block 8. The City Council for Resolution 1219 22H authorized the public application, publication and notice of a request for proposal R RFP and received two proposals. Such proposals and a review panel recommendation will be considered at the hearing. This public hearing will open at uh, 6, 11, 6, excuse me, 6.19 p.m. Daniel? So this is the uh, final step in that RFP process. Uh, just make our final decision as to which of the two options, if either, we want to go with. Um, we did route both uh, options to the review committee and the majority was in favor of option two, which was the um, proposal from Capital Homes LLC. Uh, that was for a five units uh, development. Um, yeah, uh, I think we've talked about this quite a bit. So if there's any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer anything. Uh, not, it doesn't seem we got much of a turnout for the hearing, but that's, I, I think there's a lot of support for this in general. So I wouldn't be too worried about upsetting anyone. Just for the end of the day, I know we talked about this before. Um, we, upon approval, we'll start kind of working on the actual contract and property disposal. Uh, per that contract, yeah, they'll have about 12 months to actually commence. Obviously, we'd like to see it sooner, but market shifts can happen, so it want to be somewhat flexible there. 
I watched them build the uh, units over in Washington. Mm -hmm. And when they get on it, they get on it. Yeah, I think they're a pretty capable group. Yes. So. <laughs> Very good. And I know one of the members of their team is actually from Perry. So mm -hmm. it's a nice local connection. Anything else for our public hearing? If not, this public hearing will close at 6.21 p.m. Thank you, Daniel. Moving on to old business, resolution awarding a, a request for proposal for a multi-residential development per resolution 1219-22H, the city of Perry opened a request for proposals for a multi-residential development at the city-owned lot a Blue Jay edition lot eight, block H, located off of Willis, east of the Hamlin Bell Apartments. The submitted period has ended with the city receiving two proposals. A public hearing on the proposals was set and public notice was published in the Perry Chiefs, March 16th, 2023 edition. Such hearing was held during the March 20 regular city council meeting where the proposals were reviewed and, and recommendation from the review committee was detailed. The majority of the review committee expressed a preference for submission option two received from Capital Homes LLC. This resolution would award the proposal from Capital Homes LLC and authorize staff to start the process on the disposal of property for the development. Need a motion, please? You make a motion we pass a resolution awarding a request for proposal for a multi residential development to Capital Homes LLC. I'll second that. Discussion? Looks like nice places. Any further discussion on this? I'll just say I know I was very impressed with the uh, product that they put forth and it looked uh, good. Yeah. yeah. So, very eye feeling. I think it'll go well with uh, Hamlin Bell right next yeah. door and be a good addition to that block. And that was one of the criteria we looked at as we yep. judged it. And I, I felt the same way. Yep. I like rear, the rear loading driveways. Um, so, that'll help. You know, Willis is kind of a busy street. I'm sure those on Willis appreciate alley driveways. So yep. um, should should be a really good product. And, uh, you know, we've been having conversations with them a while. So it's been a while that they've been interested in Perry and interested in doing something in Perry. So glad this will work out. And we can certainly use the housing, I think. Absolutely. Yes. Nice that they've been well on that. Yeah. Well there. Yep. And you say, Daniel, you think they'll probably start later this year sometime yet? Um, if everything goes according to plan, uh, May could be a potential start time. So I'm hoping they'd want to start this summer. I think they're pretty anxious to get building. So I would, I would look for it, but I can't guarantee that. Good. Any other discussion on this development request? If not, call the roll, please. Wally? Yes. Baller? Yes. Berkeley? Yes. Shot? Yes. Line? Yes. Thanks, Daniel, for your work on that. Next item, resolution amending the slip resistant footwear policy to the uh, PPE policy for employees per resolution 120522A, the slip resistant footwear policy was suspended because the grip tights grip lights rather excuse me supplied for such policy were not as described and had the potential to increase the chance of the falls due to being slick in nature through working with the iowa municipalities workers comp association staff was able to obtain another grant to purchase adequate traction aids in order um, to re-implement the policy for slip resistant footwear this resolution would approve the amended policy as detailed in the resolution need a motion please Make a motion to pass a resolution amending slip resistant footwear policy to the PPE policy for employees. I'll second. Discussion? So while back we repealed the right. uh, first policy we had. So this is just a new one, basically saying if it's snowy or icy, that they should wear the devices. And we did get a grant through um, IMWCA, a full grant for $4,200, I think. So it bought, it paid 100% to get all um, city full-time employees a new slip-resistant 
um, traction aids and um, all the fire department. So I think it's about 92 or so that we were able to get and hopefully we don't need them this year. And we'll use them next year. We hope not. We could, but we hope not. Yeah. <laughs> a safer. Yeah. Yes. A, a, a ton safer. And we actually, uh, Chief Vaughn had a couple of the officers try them and the maintenance guys at the rec center tried them. They liked them a lot. But, so, yep. Good. Do they slip on over your shoes? Is that yep. Yep. Slip on right over your, whatever you have, you know, boots or shoes or whatever. And, they're they're pretty durable so yep sounds good any other questions on the slip resistant footwear policy if not call the roll please Berkland, yes Fun. yes Mollard. yes shot yes Falling. yes thank you new business approval of airport commission reappointment mr william shimon has submitted a request to be re reappointed to the airport commission for a four-year term which would end on March 31st, 2027. If reappointed, Mr. Shimon has been an active member of the commission since joining and stated in his letter of intent that he has 50 years of aviation experience allowing him to help guide and grow the Paranus Airport. Must have started just as a tyke. Um, you need a motion, please, to approve that? I make a motion to approve. Uh, approval of airport commission reappointment of Mr. William. Well, second. Any discussion? Well, once again, we appreciate Mr. Shimon in this case stepping up and uh, going to continue to be on the airport commission. We approve this. Any other discussion? If not, call the roll, please. Fine. Yes. Mollard. Yes. yes. Berkland. Yes. Falling. Yes. yes. Shot. Yes. Okay. Approval of Airport Commission reappointment. Mr. David Weiser has submitted a request to be reappointed to the Airport Commission for a four year term, which would end on March 31st, 2027. If reappointed, Mr. Weiser has been an active member of the Commission. Need a motion, please? Make a motion pass approval of Airport Commission reappointment. David Weiser. And I'll second it. Any discussion? Again, we appreciate his service. Call the roll, please. Mahler? Yes. Shot? Yes. Berkeley? Yes. Falling? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Approval of Water Board of Trustees reappointment. Mr. John Webker has submitted a request to be reappointed to the Water Board of Trustees for a six year term, which would end on April 1st, 2029. If reappointed, Mr. Webker has been an active mm -hmm. member and stated in his letter of intent that he would like to continue to be part of the growth at the Waterworks. Need a motion, please? I make a motion. We pass resolution approving Water Board of Trustees reappointment of Mr. John Webker. I'll second. Any discussion? I think this takes a lot of thought. Yeah. <laughs> Any further discussion of this? Again, we appreciate Mr. John Webker's willingness to be reappointed. If no further discussion, call the roll, please. Falling. Yes. Falling. Yes. Kirkland. Yes. Falling. Yes. Shot. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Having no further business before us tonight, we stand adjourned at 6.28 p.m. Mm -hmm. for the model of your meeting. Thank you. So are we meeting Thursday or what? Thank you.